Hi everyone, thank you so much for joining us today. Today's webinar will be about overview of Clip Studio Paint 1.11.6 new features, updates and improvements presented by Sarah Jean Chang, also known as the one with Bear. Before we begin the webinar, there are some housekeeping items that we'd like to go through. The webinar will be approximately one hour long. All attendees will be muted. Question and answer session will be during the last 15 minutes of the webinar. Attendees can ask questions in the GoToWebinar question box right away. Due to time constraints, not all questions will be answered. The webinar will be recorded and the recording will be shared on social media and will be sent via email to all registrants and attendees. The panelists for this webinar are Mario Quinones, myself, and Sarah Jean Chung. For those of you who connect with us for the very first time or have never heard about Tape Studio Paint, Clip Studio Paint is only one solution for stunning, ready to publish illustrations, comics, manga, and animations. Learn more at clipstudio.net forward slash n and graphicsly.com. Also, we want to ask you to participate actively in this webinar by sharing your Instagram stories, tagging us as hashtag webinar at the one with bear at graphicsly at welcome and at clip studio paint. Sarajin Chunk, also known as the One with Bear, is a freelance illustrator who specializes in a wide range of mediums, including both digital and traditional. She streams live on Twitch and has built a community for many aspiring, art, aspiring artists, with which she shares and learn, uh, her learnings and painting process. Her art is heavily inspired by Eastern culture and fashion, and her digital art style is influenced by her passion in traditional art. So I'll leave you with Sarah Jean and her presentation, overview of Clip Studio Paint 1.11.6, new features, updates, and improvement. Thank you so much. Hello, thank you guys. Thank you, thank you Mario for that introduction. Uh, I will share my screen. Okay, show my screen. It's kind of funny how like I've done this a million times now sharing my screen, but Every single time it's still on shirt. You can see my screen, yeah? <laughs> okay. Um, awesome. So hello, everybody. Uh, welcome to the session for another awesome update for Clip Studio Paint. Thank you so much. I've been getting a lot of uh, really positive encouragement from people who have been attending the past update webinars as well. And it's been really mind-blowing uh, to see how many have learned something from the uh, from the webinars and also just keep coming back. So thank you. This is the last webinar I uh, we will be doing on top of the update with Graphicsly. Um, but actually, after this webinar session, we are going to do a 2021 recap on Celsa's YouTube channel. So that will be coming up an hour after this webinar ends. Um, but anyway, without further ado, this is a massive update and I'm so excited to share with you guys um, because it features one of the things that people have been probably asking for for years. <laughs> so um, as you can see, the a major update features in 1.11.6 uh, are liquify, 3D enhancement and newly imported items uh, or items that can be imported, I should say. And we're going to touch on all three uh, with a heavier focus on a 3D enhancement, just because the other two are actually very straightforward and very easy to understand. Um, I remember like the past few major updates, we had like seven points, uh, but this one, even though we only had three, but all three of them are pretty, pretty major. Okay, so without further delay, let's 
get into the one that have everyone going crazy over, and that is Liquify. For those who don't know what Liquify is, it's basically a pixel manipulation tool uh, used to drag, to push, to expand. It's a very easy method to be used to manipulate your illustration raster based. So it does not work on vector, it only works on raster. Okay. So where to find that? Uh, you will be able to go into your blend blend tool on your toolbar. So look for blend, and it's just right there. Uh, right next to blend is going to be liquefy. Now, because liquefy, um, I usually will want it to be pretty easily accessible, so I'm just going to like drag it. Oh, I'm just going to drag this tool and place it directly under, and that will create um a tool icon uh, right beneath the blend tool and now there are just going to be like separate tabs okay so i prefer doing that just because it's easier to access uh, you can simply do that by dragging this particular tool okay and the panels are really simplistic really easy to understand um, you have your brush size which are hold on let me actually Access this real quick. Okay. <clears throat> um, so you have your brush size, which will control the area that you are going to be manipulating. And then you have the different modes. You have how strong uh, the, the push or the manipulation is going to be. And then you have the hardness of the edges of this particular manipulation. So hardness, re also really simple to understand, like the bigger it is, the harder it gets. And the smaller it is, the softer it gets. Yeah. <laughs> so anyway, um, I'm going to just show you real quick. Uh, let me actually turn this thing off for a little bit, um, just so it's a little easier to see. Um, there you go. So push, it just pushes the pixel around like that right <laughs> i don't know what happened to that bear <laughs> and then expand is going to expand uh giving it kind of like a fish eye effect so it'll, ex uh, it'll use the center of the brush uh, as your pivot point and then push the pixel outward and then the next one is pinch, which is the expanse counterpart. So uh, this one will basically kind of like shrink all the pixel towards the middle. So that is pinch. Now the, the interesting trick here is that because these two are counterparts, expand and pinch, you can actually hold on, on alt. So if I hold it, it's going to now expand, even though I have pinch selected. Uh, so uh, with holding down Alt, it's going to swap between the two, okay? So again, if you hold down Alt, it's going to expand. If you release it, it's going to pinch again. And the next one is going to be push from the left side. So if I do this, it's going to push from the left side uh, and then just like push towards the right. And the same thing with the next one is going to push towards the other side. And if I press down Alt, because these two are counterparts, it will toggle to the left one again. Okay. And then the next one is going to be twirl tour. Wow, I just realized I cannot say that word. Tour whatever it's going to be twisting okay i'm just going to say twist um twist counterclockwise and that one is going to be twist um counterclockwise and again if you put uh if you push down alt then it's going to go clockwise and then if you release it it's going to go counterclockwise so that's the the different type of modes. And like I said, it's super, super easy to understand. And that's why I didn't really put a ton of uh, focus on this particular update 
because there are so many awesome videos uh, on Celsa's channel. Actually, uh, they just released one featuring Dado, who is an artist I really, really respect. Uh, he always has really awesome way to explain. So if you want to check those out to go a little bit more in depth on th these modes, uh, feel free to, to go check them out. But uh, that's really all I wanted to show. Um, but you can use these different modes to kind of, you know, uh, like for example, if I want to push this over there a little bit, uh, if I want to expand the eyes a little bit, you know, expand the lips and make her all ET-like, if I want to uh, twist this and just, you know, make it a little bit more um, twisty-y, <laughs> you can do that. Um, if I want the side of the face to be a little bit smaller, then uh, let's see. So just push from this side. I can do that as well. Like that, which I made her look a little bit more freaky, but that's okay. <laughs> um, but actually, the, the part that I really want to get into is one of the things called only refer to editing area this is a very interesting um option to to go over so i'm going to spend a little bit of time here if you go into sub tool detail so you want to click on the here let me enable this again okay so if you click on uh, the little icon on the bottom right, it will bring up the sub tool detail. Go into Liquify, you will see this feature only refer to editing area feature right here. I have it sort of enabled uh, and just have it showed up um, in the sub tool panel, but the default has it off. So if you want to find it, it's inside here. Now, why is this thing important? I will show you right now. When you are trying to uh, trying to manipulate a very large space, right now we don't have a toggle. This is the default. Oh, actually, let me use this one. And let me use push so it's a little bit easier to see. So this is the effect. If I want to push the pixel towards the right, uh, the reason why this is uh, included, uh, this function is included, is because it's a faster way to calculate. It's a lot less, um, it's a lot less heavy on your hardware because what it's trying to do is uh, to basically include the in entire image when they are calculated. Uh, so they are calculated in a simpler way and therefore a little bit less tasking on your hardware. So when you are doing um, liquefy when you're trying to uh, when you're trying to manipulate your in, uh, image it doesn't take as much resource so that's why the default of it is off and that is why uh, the liquefy performs a little um, quite significant bit better than other softwares that I've seen so far now if I want to have this toggled here let me show you what it does so you can see that it's significantly slower. That being said, it's a lot more accurate, right, compared to this one. Um, the reason why this is more accurate, it's because it's only referring to the editing area within the brush, right? So it's constantly calculating uh, the moving parts, and that's why it's a little bit more tasking. That being said, it's a bit more accurate when you're moving a large area like this. So for example, if you want to move like an entire house towards the left, you will want to have this mode toggled because that will maintain the shape of the house as it's moving rather than uh, being twisted like this. Now, but if you are going to like, navigate small areas, um, I would highly recommend just having it off because uh, the accuracy, the overall accuracy is slightly less important and what's important is the performance. So you can kind of play around with the two. Um, the, the difference is going to be more significant when the brush size or the editing size is bigger, right? Okay, so that's the editing area part. Again, fairly straightforward stuff. Uh, so. That's really it, even though 
I know liquify is something that everybody is super excited for, but because it's so easy to understand, um, that's really all I can say about it. Go crazy, like go play with it, go, um, you know, try to do shape design or uh, manipulate your characters using this way to quickly create um, different types of composition. So I, I really, I, I'm super happy that this is now part of Clip Studio Paint and it really kind of gives it an edge again. All right, so the next part is going to be import uh, the three items that have been newly imported into Clip Studio are PDF, font, and gradient from Photoshop. So I'm going to show you an example of how to do all three. <clears throat> now, first of all, we'll start with font. Um, you simply just go into font, go into the drop down menu, add font from files. And this way you can just select any font file that you have. Um, today is not Friday nor 13th, so I feel like a font that is called Friday the 13th is somehow very fitting. <laughs> so I'm going to select that, open, <clears throat> and it has been, okay, it can be backed up. So I'll tell you that. And now it's right there. Like it just got added into somewhere. Oh, it has, it's selected. So, oops, where did it go now? Ah, let me enlarge it. So Friday the 13th. 13. <laughs> there you go. So it's easy as that. Uh, you may ask, why don't I just double click on the font uh, in file folder and just install it? The difference between um, adding it from your menu in Clip Studio Paint is that the font is actually installed under Clip Studio Paint's directory. It's not installed in Windows. So that's the major difference. If you want all of your fonts, your fancy creative uh, creative fonts uh, to be only inside Clip Studio Paint, and instead you don't want them installed uh, in your regular Windows usage to kind of like cloud uh, with your regular uh, Word documents and whatnot, this is a really good way because uh, this is technically not going to show up in your Windows font listing, right? Just Clip Studio Paint. And if you want to delete a font that you added through this method, you will have to find it under the Clip Studio Paint directory under Documents, I think, or wherever you install Clip Studio Paint in. So um, those are the two key differences. But again, very straightforward stuff. <clears throat> that is font import. And the next one is going to be um gradient import so you have all these fancy colors here you know like photoshop has uh photoshop has a lot of really pretty like default gradient if you want to have those colors inside clip studio paint all you have to do inside photoshop is to right click on the gradient and hit export as simple as that and then you will get a gradient file and how you would import that in Clip Studio is you go into Subtool, Event Settings, and then you click this icon here and import gradients. And you would find this type of um, gradient file from Photoshop and just open. As easy as that. Now you have a fancy pastel color that, you know, I just like it. It's really pretty. It's really soft. And I double click on it to select it. And now I can use it. Again, very simple stuff. And you can now flip the gradient as well. So uh, in the past, we have to basically manually drag these things uh, around. And it was not super, super um easy to use so <clears throat> now that you can just use this to flip it's awesome so there you have it that's the that's the gradient import i'm really sorry if i'm just flying through this now i always feel a little bad when i'm just like jumping from one feature to another but these are all pretty easy to understand things um and if you forgot the step it's just uh going into subtool event setting click on the icon here and import gradient that's it 
All right. And the last one is going to be PDF uh, import. And I know this is very significant and very important for comic book artists uh, when they need to import a PDF file because a lot of comic books are exported in PDF as well. So um, right now I have this uh, PDF file uh, that is, I can show you right now. It's this thingy here. <clears throat> okay. All I need to do is drag and drop. So this is an EX only feature. So if you only have Clip Studio Paint Pro, you won't have access to this feature. Now, the reason for that is this. Uh, I'm going to show you. Just going to. <clears throat> so um, it's going to generate like a, a, a page file, basically. And it will ask you to select where you wanted to export it and oh sorry where you want to store it um and then you can set out the preset of oh, for example right now let's just stick to 72 because we're just showing you you can select the right left binding uh starting page uh start page from left or right etc and then you just hit okay <clears throat> and there you have it it's a book of questionable thingy that i drew <laughs> <laughs> so they basically give you like these uh, different pages, um, separate them into a folder of files. <clears throat> so let's, let's show you over here. So it will give you these separated files, just like uh, usually what they give you when you start a book in EX version, right? So that's the PDF, uh, PDF import. And again, very simple stuff drag and drop, uh, and that's it. All right. I hope that was easy to understand. Uh, again, I'm so sorry if I went a little bit too fast on all that because I feel like the, the most uh, difficult part to understand about this update is actually 3D stuff. So I want to um, put a little bit of time there. Um, but I am gonna jump right into it. If you have any questions, leave them in the uh, Q and A, or just send me a message on uh, on Instagram, and I'll be happy to uh, to answer them anytime. All right, let me actually use this file right now. So under your 3D, uh, under the material folder 3D primitive. Currently, there are six items, uh, sorry, five items. Let's not count this one. Um, we have five items that are uh, imported in here. And all you need to do is find one, drag and drop. And when, it, when it's in here, um, it's basically going to give you like a, a very straight on frontal view. So I'm going to use the camera of you to drag it out a little bit just so you can see all right so that is a primitive and let me close this put this out all right okay I'm getting a little nervous <laughs> just because I hope I can do a good job explaining this because this is so awesome and so full of potential. I really want you guys to be able to understand how this can be used and utilized. All right. So in here, when, when you have this selected, you can do a few different manipulation towards the object, just like any other 3D object. When you select it, you can enlarge it, minimize it. Uh, you can also move the position of it. Oops. You can use these little bars to move the position. And you can, oops, let's be grounded. Um, you can also rotate. Now it gives you like this interesting little radial menu. So you can snap it uh, pretty well. You can kind of like calculate the angle a little bit better. Same thing with rotate. Uh, rotate is the orange bar that is on the bottom. And then you can use, um, sorry, the green bar that was on the bottom. But you can use all of these bars to kind of change the navigation. I find this radar menu to be a lot easier than the, the bars that are over here. 
over here you can import really precise numbers um, but i personally just prefer using uh, the the drag the dragging part over here okay so you can also change the ratio of this primitive uh, all you have to do is uncheck that so there is a fixed ratio right here so right now if i'm trying to expand this um, it does maintain its size but if i uncheck fixed ratio you can have it expand flatten make it smaller or flatten and grow whatever uh, adjective or verb that you want to use but you can use this to uh, really kind of change its shape like if you want a building um, something like that to add the texture later you can basically just change the base shape of it um, but right now we are going to reset uh, reset the model oh, reset scale so if i want to oh if i want to reset I just hit this button right here. So now it's going to uh, go back to the original cube. And then another thing is under here is subdivision. You can ignore this entire part right here because this is uh, more so controlling uh, camera position and the perspective. So ignore all that right now. Um, the subdivision is another interesting one that you should look at. If I increase this, you notice the wireframe started increasing in uh, amounts, right, on the X and also that and also Z. So you can have as many as you want or as little as you want. Um, why this is going to be important uh, is going to come later. I will show you very quickly, um, but you can turn the wireframe off. Those are called the wireframes or have it enabled. This is really important. It doesn't technically, um, it doesn't technically uh, increase the polygon. Like again, remember Clip Studio Paint is not a 3D software. It's a 2D software with 3D enhancement or 3D incorporation in it to help you um, create your references. So the amount that these 3D primitives can do is actually really powerful in a 3D, uh, 2D perspective. But in terms of like, if you want to change the polygons, if you want to change the um, the complete shape, like giving it more sides, et cetera, et cetera, um, this is not what it's used for. However, the, wi uh, the wireframes, I'm going to show you right now what it does. Okay, so to save a little bit of time, I have all of the I have all of them lined up uh, in the in the 3D plane. Now you can see all of them. Uh, again, you can have them expand. The same thing would be uh, applicable to all of them. Now we're going to use this one as an example, and go see like map. We're going to export. So under color, there is a function called map. We're going to export and we're going to just, I don't know, save it. And let me show you what it saved. So that's what it saved. Um, it's an image file. And this mapping is basically equivalent to the globe or the wireframe, uh, however many lines that you have on here is however many wireframes that you put on here. So for example, if you uh, want this one to have more uh, more lines, um, when it export, it's going to export exactly that many lines for you. Uh, this is a really good way for you to um, kind of gauge where you're going to be drawing the texture to make it fit uh, the shape. Um, and we're going to, I'm going to show you right here. So let's assume I use this particular shape uh, to create a texture. I can go into file right here, file, and I'll select that. And voila, now it's a magical globe. <laughs> Let me turn off uh, you can turn the wireframe off because right now, obviously, I'm not going to be using uh, all of those frames inside my work. So I'm going to turn this off, show wireframe. And there you go. You can have uh, this little 
globe. Oops, um, I'm going to have this globe that you can just look at from different sides, right? And it will completely incorporate whichever um, texture that you have drawn. And so I'm just going to show you kind of how I created that effect um, quickly. And we're going to use the liquify tool. So I'm going to select the black and invert, which is control shift I. And this would uh, ensure that I'm drawing inside the white area. And I'm just going to like, uh, actually, I mean, you can ignore this part. This is really just my own workflow. Okay. And I am gonna fill it. What color should we, what color should we use? <laughs> Nobody can respond to me right now, but that, <laughs> that's okay. Um, okay, I'm going to use some yellow. So this is the globe that we just exported. I'm going to do, um, oh, that, that's a nice, that's a nice color, right? So, so, something like that, that works. <laughs> and then we're gonna use liquify over here. We're just gonna push, just gonna push these color around. Wow, that's a uh, that's a uh, very interesting. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. Okay, and um, let's do okay twirling. I feel like twirling would be pretty fun. Oh, oh no. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> That's fine, because it's like twirling in the transparency as well. Uh, so I'm just going to just fill that again with other color. Sure, why not? <laughs> you know, and then we're just going to save this. Uh, we're just going to save this PNG. All right, and let's go back to the 3D file. Uh, again, using the object tool, have the globe selected and just choose texture. And then the one, the super weird looking one that we just created. And now there you have it. It's a texture globe. <laughs> if I turn off the light source uh, from the bottom here, you can kind of see it in all of its glory or non-glory. I don't, I don't, I don't know. <laughs> so yeah, that's uh, how you import an opaque um, image on all of the primitive uh, you can try it on all of the primitives uh, all you have to do is just have them selected and then export the map uh, this one i'm also going to import another uh, map that i have designed or prepared <clears throat> so now we're gonna zoom in a little bit just so you can see all right so you would notice like this one very questionable table, you know, design that I put on with all of my Christmas designs. Um, this one has transparency. And that's because the PNG that I drew with initially had transparency. I'm going to import it right now. This is the map uh, for that prism. And as you can see, they are on the transparent, semi transparent background. And the reason why I wanted to show that is because right now you will see that the alpha um, auto changed to semi transparent. If I select the previous one, you will see that it's opaque, right? But this one is semi transparent. There is also another mode called remove with threshold. So if I remove it with threshold, you will see that the um, the uh, alpha part or the semi-transparent part became opaque again. And that is because the alpha threshold is set to a particular uh, a particular amount. If the alpha threshold uh, goes above a certain amount and you're basically telling them to delete whatever that falls below this amount. So you can just play around, like, I mean, that's a very technical term. So you can just play around with it 
Um, this means like if you have some kind of semi-transparent and I increase the alpha, it's going to delete whatever that falls below that alpha. And therefore it removed uh, the previously uh, semi-transparent part. Oh, did I? Okay, there you go. So now you are left with a rotating little, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what I don't know who you would call it. Just send me a message, tag me on Instagram, tell me what you named this. I don't know. <laughs> but if I go back to semi-transparent, then it's it's gonna go back to this thing. I don't know. Happy holiday, guys. I just want it to be really wholesome um, and and fun. So this is something a little bit festive, I suppose. Um, and of course, there is also. Um, Okay, so let me take a look. So this is just semi-transparent because my um, my original PNG was semi-transparent, but this one, I'm going to also import a file. Uh, let's see. All right, so this one was actually completely transparent uh, on my PNG, and I'll show you the PNG that I have. So this is the PNG that I drew. I actually used um, like a, what is it called? The symmetry, symmetry tool to create all of this. And um, if you enable snapping on your brushes, you actually will see that Liquify works on symmetry as well. And if you want to see how that is done, you can check out Datto's um, Liquify, Liquify video on Celsius. Um, YouTube channel. You can just Google Liquify Celsius Clip Studio Paint. <laughs> it's really easy to find. Um, but basically, I just used this really quickly. Uh, I just did this really quickly using the symmetry tool, and I copy and pasted all of my my cubes onto the map that you can export. Let's go back to this. And um, as they have inherent PNG. Uh, inheritance alpha, you can see that they are see-through. And this is super, super, super cool because you can just create so many different props. Uh, you can create so many different intricate design uh, using these simple tools and just drag those files in and then replace them with it. And you will be able to have this thing at every angle instead of having to draw them every single time. And they could, this can apply uh, to, like for example, a magic caster, right? You have a fancy magic spell that you don't want to always draw again and again. You can just use these 3D primitives to reuse them again and again. And you can, of course, uh, register them. Uh, as your materials, just choose um, a place where you will want to store them. Like for example, primitive. Um, I don't need to put a search tag at the moment. And there you go. You will be able to see that this is now inside my 3D asset. And whenever I drag it in, it's going to be there. So again, super, super flexible stuff. Just get creative with it, you know, draw a bunch of different textures. You can even use, oh, sorry, let me put this again. You can even use the existing color pattern. And for example, I have these materials, you can just drag them on top of it. There you go. You can have a fancy cube now. And remember to always turn off the wireframe um, and also, you know, if you apply the light source, it will give it uh, a little bit more depth. Um, but the world is your oyster or something like that. <laughs> so again, really awesome stuff that they are creating, really awesome potential that they're creating with this. Sorry, I'm a little scattered at the moment. Oh, not sub to a detail. Um, tool property, there you go. All right, so those are the three major shape. Now let me delete this one. The last one is a 3D plane. This one is going to be really interesting and we're going to put a little bit more time into that one. And as you can see, as the name suggests, it's a plane. It's just a, a flat plane there, you know, not as fancy as the other one, 
but this one actually has, in my opinion, more potential when it comes to background prop design. Um, and again, you can change the ratio of this as well, um, et cetera, et cetera. But what they do, oh, let me turn my camera again. is that you can import any just flat image. I'm going to import this pink little elephant that I really like. Um, this is one of my proudest work this year. Just this elephant. <laughs> just this elephant. Uh, I, I really love it. I named it Eleanor. Um, but as you can see, this elephant was just a flat PNG file that looks like this there look at its innocent eyes it's just a flat uh, png file but uh, i was able to put it in this plane and it becomes a 3d object inside this plane it's technically just 2d inside a 3d space right um and the great part is that it also automatically adapts to its ratio but I can still change the ratio, like I can widen my elephant, I can make uh, it a little bit taller, I can make it a little bit smaller, I can do whatever I want with it, right? <clears throat> so that's it. And you're like, well, why is that important? Why would I want to randomly have a 2D image inside a 3D plane? I'm going to show you why this is really cool, and we're going to use this weird little classroom uh, asset to, to show you. Okay, I will, again, uh, give me one second to set this up. You know, sometimes, <laughs> sometimes when I uh, use the big screen for a little bit too long, uh, I kind of miss having the enough screen space. Um, but I think that's kind of spoiled. <laughs> okay, I'm going to use this pink little bar to drag it towards the left. Okay, now it has snapping, so it's pretty cool uh, for you to be able to align object as well. Like I want it to be in the middle of, okay, in the middle of the, the desk. Just, oh, just in the middle. There you go. All right. So we're going to put that plane over there on that table. I'm going to turn off the light source just because it's a little bit easier to see and don't have to worry about like it being too dark. Okay, so I'm going to import the elephant again. That's the PNG. I just click on file there. There we have our elephant there. Okay, so. We're going to select the object, copy. This is Control C, Control V. There's a, nothing happened. It was scammed, right? But if I use this pink bar to drag, you see there are now two elephants. Yay! All right. And I'm going to put the second elephant over there on that table. Now, if I Control V again after doing this action, You'll see there appear another elephant just right on that table. And let me move there. If I control V again, there's another elephant there. So this is called the aligned copy, okay? Aligned copy is a new snapping way for you to copy and paste items in a row with the same exact distance. So what you wanna do is select an object, control V, uh, control C, Control V, which is pasting it in place. And even though it looks like nothing happened, but it actually pasted another elephant in place. And then you're going to use this little bar to drag it to a distance that you like. Uh, and then you'll see like there are two elephants. Now, once you are done this, you control V again. The next elephant is going to appear in the place with the same distance that you just placed. So, and this can be applied. Um, Okay, let me do, let me select this. So to select multiple 3D object, you press shift, click on this, 
click on this and then you control C, control V. I'm going to drag those elephants over there and then control V again. Control V again, and now you have an army of elephants. <laughs> Isn't that freaking amazing? It's so convenient. If you want to, if you need to place a bunch of materials uh, in an aligned fashion, like this is really, really, really convenient. Now, the problem is when I rotate my, like for example, if I have just let's let's just assume they're all students right like in a 3d environmental space um but if i rotate this you would notice that they're 2d what if i want to redraw a scene with them in place but then when i rotate it the you can tell that they're 2d like we don't want that right so uh let's actually use these elephants here So instead, there is actually a really awesome feature called Rotate and Follow Camera. Let's check that. And notice that the elephants are all facing you now. Uh, actually, let me turn off the wire flame just so it's a little easy to see. So instead of these, um, these other elephants that are facing the direction that the plane was facing now these planes are all facing me and me is in the camera and that's because rotate and follow camera is on so now if i rotate the camera you see all of those elephants are looking right at me it's a little unsettling and creepy but that's what we want <laughs> you know and why this is important is because imagine if these are street lamps or trees on the sidewalk um, in the past, you would actually need a 3D tree in a 3D environment so that when you are rotating the camera, the tree will rotate with you, right? But then that would require you to find a 3D object um, instead of just being able to create yourself. Like I'm pretty sure most of us are not 3D artists and therefore being able to mock up 3D, fake 3D object is actually awesome because you can just draw these props yourself and have them drop in the background and follow your camera around with the illusion that they're 3D and being able to be rotated, but they're really not. <laughs> so this actually creates a ton of potential for you to really design uh, 2D items to place in a 3D scene that you can use at any angle and it won't kind of like spoil or that you have to redraw anything. Um, so I really, really, really welcome the inclusion of this and hence why I felt quite passionate about sharing this aspect uh, today and spend a bit more time here because you can really get creative with this and I would absolutely love to see uh, how people start using them um, to kind of help speed up their background workflow. Okay, so those are the 3D primitives. Let me just uh, double check to see if I missed anything. Uh, okay, I guess another part is uh, that you can change the color. So, and in this one, uh, let's change it to opaque, right? Uh, but technically this is uh, semi-transparent. Semi so if I change the color over here, it's actually going to apply a base color to the, to the prism with my semi-transparent stuff on top of it. If I change it to, let me actually change it to, uh, let me see, let me see how I can show this. I can just show it on a base color one. You can just change the color on those. You know, it's really straightforward stuff, but I'm just showing you that it can be done. <clears throat> All right. The last one is going to be quite a trip. Uh, this is going to be per panorama. And I know that a lot of people have been reporting that they don't see the panorama feature. Um, you're going to go in here. <clears throat> 
So under 3D, you can see panorama. Um, my folder has these four, but yours probably doesn't. And if it doesn't, you have to open your Clip Studio. Okay, so you're gonna go to File, Open Clip Studio, and once the Clip Studio is open, it should automatically start syncing with whatever asset that you're missing uh, from the update. And you will see the upper right. I can't show you right now just because my uh, account name is on there. Um, but the upper right, you will see that kind of like transmission icon with the two arrows, uh, like two arrows back and forth. I think it looks like this or something like that. Um, and then that would start basically loading these panorama into your folder. And once it's loaded, uh, you just drag and drop and it'll download it into your, your PC or your Mac or whichever system that you're using. So let me show you the panorama view. All right. Oh. Aha. I know why. Let me do that. So make sure you don't have any 3D object in there already. Okay. Okay. It doesn't, it does not want to collaborate. I'm sorry. Let me just start a new file. <laughs> huh. Okay. This time it does not want to work. I don't know why. Uh, okay. Uh, let me just use this to navigate for the time being. Or I can import a 3D object. Let's put in Joseph. A lot of people remember Joseph from the curse days, but let me just have Joseph in there. Okay, now I can use the, the camera navigation. I can basically pose Joseph in any sort of pose inside a 3D environment and just start drawing. And the, the cool part is uh, you can have any sort of panoramic shot and just place your th 3D, um, 3D object inside the shot and then start drawing. So this is really useful if you um, if you already have a scene created or you just want like a very muted background and not to worry too much about having draw it every single time and still have it consistent. Now, for, for example, the panorama control is on the very bottom here, right here, right? Or you can access it through this drop down menu here and then select panorama and it's going to change to that. And I'm going to do, um, I took a panorama shot of my room. There you go. This is a really horrible picture that I, I, uh, that I may have. Okay, Joseph is just floating there. Ignore him for now, <laughs> just ignore him. Um, but I took this with my phone. So, you know, there is a lot of weird stitching area that just doesn't really make sense. Like this table just completely disappeared. There's a, ignore all that. But just imagine like you can use this to create like a very fast background using existing existing environment uh, through just taking picture, right? And let me delete Joseph and um, let me just, let me just draw something there. So uh, I can create a regular raster layer and just draw. Okay, like for example, I want the shot to be like right there. There. Beautiful. Very innocent look. There you go. <laughs> and now we can go into panoramic view and just rotate and then I can place this item, <laughs> I can place them anywhere. You know, just imagine the potential that they can do. Uh, it's actually it's actually really, really awesome that, you know, these are now a thing and we can, let's just place it on the table, I don't know. Um, so, 
there are also two views. Uh, if you have fast, then you would see like the the edges are always uh, semi-apparent. But if you don't want that, you can change it to normal, uh, just so it will like crop basically crop it out. It would take a little bit of more time to process. Uh, so if it's not really necessary, then I recommend just going with the fast, right? Um, and then once you toggle to another layer, it's going to automatically uh, clear all of the stuff that you don't need to see. So that's it. <laughs> we did it. Um, I hope that was clear. Oh, one last thing. Uh, so I wanted to show you. Uh, there you go. So like I, I was telling you before, the wireframes, if you increase the wireframe, okay, let me let me delete this. Uh, let me delete this texture over here. <clears throat> so for example, this particular cube, if I increase the wireframe, right, and I hit export, test. And then I put it in here. You see the uh like there is one oh, horizon <laughs> what X or whatever you call it. Like there's one part that has more lines, or uh that's because it's reflecting uh accurately to however many wireframes you put on the 3D asset. And this is good because you can really accurately know that okay. So this may be a window over here, and you can just, when you're creating the texture, you can just follow the wireframes. Um, and yeah, that's it, I, I think, Mario. Do we have any questions? I know we're like really tight on time. <laughs> uh, we have tons of questions. Are you serious? Uh, oh, so no. <laughs> thank you all of you who have been sharing all of your doubts in the question panel. Uh, so let's go now that we are talking about the, this uh, new tool. And there's one question regarding the textures. I don't know if you already said it, but there's mm -hmm. the doubt of you. how do you import this uh, texture for the panorama view? Do you need to import HDR uh, files? So the panorama view uh, file, hold on. There is a specific format. Uh, what is the format of this? So let me, let me actually, sorry, let me just open this real quick. Oh, properties. Okay, so my panorama, um, the, the one that I just showed you is a JPEG. That being said, uh, it has to be a very particular, uh, type of image so this is the this is the image right i i use the panoramic view uh in my pixel phone and there is a way to just kind of like they help you stitch all of these pictures together and those are the weird stitching part but this is a jpeg um but if you have like an actual 3d camera i believe they actually export in their specific um file format those all work it just has to work inside a globe if that makes sense right mm -hmm. and um another question related to the same um where can we find this kind of files if, if you don't have this kind of technology to take this kind of picture um i think you can just google panoramic shots uh, just use the term panoramic uh, there are definitely a ton that are um inside the asset store people have started uploading them possibly and also there are a lot of online shops where you can purchase uh, these type of images from so uh, just google them for now but I'm, I'm pretty sure once uh once this feature is released long enough clip studio asset store is going to have a ton of options mm -hmm, definitely mm -hmm. so we yeah. also encourage you to the users to share your your panorama uh, images to with the community right yeah yeah exactly and probably not my way, room 
<laughs> you can upload your room, but maybe that's a, uh, that's a problem of privacy. But um, one question related to sizes: Is there a specific size to upload to the Panorama feature? No, there is no specific size. Um, but it will be recommended if you uh, don't re uh, don't upload something too large, just because it'll be really task. Uh, tasking for uh, for them to process when whenever you're rotating it um, mm -hmm. but this particular one that I uh, that I uploaded oh, oops where did it go uh, this particular one that I uploaded is like I think eight megabytes or something like that so it, it wasn't really huge uh, by mm -hmm. any means yeah and, and actually it's for a uh, reference purpose right so yeah it is for reference for sure mm -hmm. exactly so another question um can you pair the panoramas with 3d primitives yes you can so the 3d uh so this is basically a, a 3d plane and let me let me actually put this in here for now just so it's a little easier to see. So I can place the cube over here. Uh, it would need a lot of tinkering uh, right now, which uh, we may not have time for during the session, but you absolutely certainly can um, put all of anything that you can think of because they share the same plane, if that makes sense. So I can put in my, my little uh, elephant here. <laughs> I was gonna say, Put the yeah. elephant, please. <laughs> yes, I will put the elephant. Uh, so I'm going to go into my file again. And like, there you go. So my elephant is over there now. <laughs> awesome. Yeah, there you go. OK, um, one uh, question related uh, with the liquify tool. Uh, mm -hmm. Can you share us again how to find it and how to add it to the to the main uh, yes. tool? set yes of course uh, so that will be um, here let me reset it let me reset this so it will initially be under blend tool and this could actually be under anything that is inside this like some people have copy stamp probably probably selected so it'll look like this uh, but it's under blend usually beneath eraser I believe. Um, so you just kind of have to fish around until you find the blend. It is next to it under liquify. And what you want to do is you want to drag this thing, this thing, not the top, not the top tab, okay, but the one inside it. Drag this and then place it on your toolbar. That's how you do it. Mm -hmm. Awesome. And uh, well, we're running out of time. One last question. Uh, okay. I'm not sure if it, this is possible, but can uh, can you um, upload as a texture and an animated file? Yes, absolutely. You can you can include any of these. Wait, is this? Do you mean use the texture or the 3D plane inside the animation? Uh, uh, the first one. <laughs> or as a texture. Oh, you mean like using an animation as a texture? Mm -hmm. I see. Uh, no, I don't. I don't think that is possible at the moment. What you can use um, is Eclipse Studio Paint file, but I don't think there is a way to play the animation at the moment. Um, I could be wrong, but I don't think that is doable at the moment. Um, but I can actually import. Uh, the clip studio paint file so let me give this a try so i'm going to use this again so before we use the png file right right uh let me delete this oops okay so i select that i can actually select the clip studio file open it and there you go it can it's able to import clip studio paint file but unfortunately i don't know if it's an animation clip studio file if it's gonna work give it a try let me know <laughs> mm -hmm. yes yeah. exactly uh, yeah. we want to um, as a last thought we want to encourage you to play around with these new features 
we're pretty sure that you can, with these new tools, you will be able to create amazing um, artwork. So mm -hmm. um, one last thought to share, sorry, Jean. Yes, uh, again, in an hour, please do join us on Celsa's YouTube channel. I'm going to put the link, I think the link is in the chat. I'm just yes. going to, oh, uh, do I have it? Okay. Just, Let me just uh, copy it again. Okay, okay, thank you, thank you, Mario. So yeah, uh, be sure to join us in uh, 2021 recap. We're gonna go over the past brush updates that happened this year, as well as briefly on the update that you just heard. So if you were unclear, uh, you can probably hear it again in a more brief, um, in a more brief form. And also we're gonna go over some of the stuff that have been submitted to the community. So it's really awesome. Uh, join us uh, in an hour on the Southwest YouTube channel. Now, before I go, I really, really, really want to thank you guys so much for all of your support this year. Uh, Graphicsly has been doing incredibly well with these webinars and it we can't do it without you guys uh, constantly showing up and showing the support, uh, right, Mario? <laughs> We have yes. like a ton of attendees, I think. Um, yes, today. so we want to thank you. Uh, thank you for your kind messages on, on the question panel. Thank you mm -hmm. so much, Sarajin, for another wonderful presentation. Mm -hmm. uh, we love your style, how you present things. We It's really entertaining, so, so thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Happy, happy holidays. <laughs> Yes, happy holidays for all of you. And remember that for more information about Clip Studio Paint, visit our website, clipstudio.net forward slash and graphicsly.com. And if you miss something, uh, you can rewatch this webinar because it will be uploaded to our YouTube channel, Clip Studio Paint channel, and Graphicsly. Mm. For more information about Sarah Jean and her projects, follow her on her social medias Instagram, our station, Twitch, and Twitter. So with that, we are wrapping up this webinar. Don't forget to join Sarajin or the coming webinar in about an hour. Mm -hmm. uh, we left the link on the chat. So once again, thank you so much for your participation today on the webinar on social media and happy end of the year, Sarajin. Happy holidays for you. Happy holidays and to you guys. <laughs> we hope to see you in our next event. So stay tuned and we'll see you on future events and webinars of Graphicsly, Clips to the Bane, and welcome. So with that, thank you so much. Thank you, guys. Bye. -bye. Bye.